Okay, if you would turn the page in your book to the little Geneva sprocket, uh, we're going to look at creating a, a part that consists or a shape that consists of a, a pattern. In this case, obviously, it's a radial pattern. We uh, will create one copy of that pattern and then use that to create the entire part. So we're looking at a, a piece of UH, UHMW that's one inch thick. Uh, it swings a radius, the finished part swings a radius of three and seven sixteenths, uh, rounded down obviously a little bit. Uh, but uh, we're going to use this number for our stock. Uh, I'm just going to bump that up to three and a half inches for a seven by seven plate that we're going to make this out of. So in Gibbs Cam, uh, let me make sure I have this saved. One day I'll learn to do that before I start the next video. I'm um, going to create a new part called Sprocket. And I will attempt to spell it correctly. Sprocket. All right, so I'm going to make it out of seven by seven plate with my origin in the center. So I'm going to have three and a half to the right of the origin and minus three and a half in the X for the left side of the part. And then same thing in Y. The back of the part will be at Y three and a half. The front of the part will be at minus three and a half in the Y. Top will still be zero. Bottom will be at minus one in the Z. We'll save this. And here's our part, our material blank. So I'm going to start off with the stuff in the center. I've got a three-quarter inch bore in the center. I'll draw a circle for that. And then I'm going to draw an eight place or eight uh, hole bolt circle on an inch and a half diameter. Uh, and I will go ahead and draw circles for that as well. But I'm going to start out with points at that location or at those locations. So in Gibbscam, I'm going to open my geometry palette. I'm going to draw circles, radius and center point. At the origin, I'm going to draw a circle with a 375 radius for a three-quarter inch diameter. I'm going to go to point, bolt circle, and I'm going to do a full bolt circle on a three-quarter inch radius. There are eight holes at zero, zero, and I'm going to clock it to zero. Now, to draw circles around these eight points, if I select those points first, I'm going to deselect the circle. If I select those points first and go to circle, then that implied definition thing kicks in and it thinks that I'm trying to use uh, the first three of these points to create a three feature circle and that's what it's shooting for right there. Obviously not what I had in mind. So if I start with nothing selected, go ahead and get into the circle menu and into the circle based on radius and center point. Now the software is looking for center points. So I can select all of those. I don't even need to deselect the circle because it's not a point. And type in a radius of 3 16 And I get a circle around each of those points. Now I don't want to have the circles and the points. So I'm going to delete the points. I'm just going to go to the edit menu, select special, and select all the points. There are no connectors or terminators that I need to deselect. So I can just delete all of those. All right. Now for the outside shape, let's take a look at what we're working with. Uh, we have to draw exactly one copy of the pattern, no more and no less, no duplicate geometry, and it's got to be what's considered a fully terminated shape. So all of the geometry will be blue except for a yellow square that's called a terminator on each end of the shape. So I'm going to start where this line connects to this circle, and I'm going to end where this circle connects to this line. So we're ending right here starting right here. Now, just a, a word of warning, I guess. Uh, I'll be drawing this circle here and then copying it up to here. And the reason for that is I need a point where this cir the circle would intersect this line right there to start my pattern at. And then I need to be able to copy that point as well as that circle up to this location so I have a point to end my shape at. So just don't be confused when I create this circle down here that's outside of what I said that my pattern was going to be. Uh, there's, there's a reason for it. So I'm going to start with this circle here. Uh, it's going to be half of this number, half of 656 in radius. And it's located at 2.328 in the X and at Y0. So starting with that, 
draw a circle, radius and center point. The center point is going to be at x, 2.328, y0, z0, and a radius of 0.656 divided by 2. And we're off and running. So coming off of that, we've got two horizontal lines. So I'm just going to go to the line menu, tangent to a circle at an angle, select that as my reference circle, zero for the angle, and select both choices. All right, here, the next thing is this little 093 radius, and then I'm also going to draw this one down here, even though this is outside of my pattern. Um, but let's just focus on this one right now. This circle is tangent to this line and this three-quarter inch radius circle here. The problem is we don't know where this three-quarter inch radius circle is at. So what I'm going to do is use this circle, this 3 and 7 sixteenths radius circle, uh, which just describes the, the radius that these tips swing when this thing is spinning, uh, but I'm going to use it as a construction circle. So if I go over here and I create a circle radius and center point around the origin with a 3.437, I'll round it the same way that they did on the drawing, uh, then I get this, and that gives me enough information to draw a circle tangent to that line and that circle with a radius of 0.093. Shift enter because I need to draw another circle. Here, I want that one. And then I also want a circle tangent to that line and that circle. In this case, I want that one. All right, let me zoom in on that just a little bit. It doesn't look much like our part, but that's okay. Now, this is what is left of that 3 and 7 sixteenths radius circle. It was a construction circle, and I've got a pretty firm rule of thumb that when I'm finished with a construction, a piece of construction geometry, I delete it or at least move it or have it in a different work group so that it's not staying on my screen. Uh, in this case, I don't need this any longer, so I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to hold down the control key and get the connector at each end of it, as well as these two center points while I'm deleting things. I'll go ahead and clean that up as well and trash can those. Going back to our drawing now, we have this circle, this shape here, and this circle here. I need this circle in this position. So to figure that out, I need to know how many legs are on this thing. So starting at this one that's just above center line, counting that as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine legs on this, or nine copies of the pattern that I'm creating. All right, so that's going to be 40 degrees between them. So if I highlight this circle because I need it up here and this point because I need a copy of this point up here to give me a place to end that circle at and go to my modify menu and I'm going to, I don't want to 2D rotate because I need to leave this point here. Uh, I just want a copy of that point rotated. So I'm going to, I'm going to come to duplicate and 2D rotate. Uh, I want to rotate around 0, 0, counterclockwise. I'm going to go 360 divided by 9, which is 40 degrees. And right now, I just want one copy. And that gives me that. Now I've got enough information to draw a circle that's tangent to that circle and that circle with a 3 quarter inch radius. I want this one that's furthest to the outside. All right, so let's go back over our rules. I'm going to get rid of that center point. Uh, let's go back over our rules. We have to have one copy of the geometry, one copy of the pattern, no more, no less. Well, we have more than one copy because this circle and that circle are the same piece of the pattern. So one of them has to go. This circle has a point that I can terminate it at. This one does not have a point that I can terminate it at down here. So I'm going to delete this circle. Now I have exactly one copy of the pattern, no more, no less, but it's also got to be a fully terminated shape. That means that everything between this yellow square, once it's terminated, that'll be a square, and this yellow, what will be a square, a terminator, uh, everything between those two points has to be blue. So I'm going to select this line and terminate it at this point. Now it's already connected down here. We've got a connector there. So this line is already connected to that circle. I just need to define the other end of that line as being here. So I highlight that line, that point, and connect them. And it trims or terminates that line at that point. And that little yellow square is called a terminator. I'm going to highlight this circle and that point 
and connect those. So now I've got exactly one copy of my pattern, no more, no less, no du duplicate geometry, uh, and it is a fully terminated shape. So I'm going to double click, which is kind of my last, uh, uh, my last, the last. So now I'm going to double click on this, which is my uh, kind of my final check that I've got everything connected correctly. Uh, make sure it's you know selects everything from end to end. I'm going to change the number of copies to eight. We need nine total. We've got one. I need eight duplicates. Uh, I don't change anything on this page because it should already be set up correctly. Hit do it, and I've got my shape. So. What I'd like y'all to do is to draw this part. We definitely need this one for toolpath creation tomorrow. Uh, make sure you got your center bore and your holes. These could all be points. They could all be circles, well, whichever you prefer. Uh, and then draw the outside shape. Remember that we are looking for this before you do your final rotation. And these look exactly like this. Uh, yellow square and then everything blue until you get to the next yellow square. And when you rotate this 40 degrees counterclockwise, that point should end up exactly on top of that point. And those are the rules for, uh, for duplicating. So let me uh, redo that, get back to here, and save my copy of it. Uh, and y'all go ahead and work on yours.